welcome to the beginning of probably a three-part series on getting better at Wreckfest, which I'm going to call Slayer's Academy. And before we get started, I am still working on reviewing every car. It's quite difficult to come up with something interesting to say about them all though, so it's going to take a bit of time. A lot longer than I was expecting. So, you want to be better at Wreckfest. Well, first you need to come up with how you want to be better at Wreckfest. If you just want to be blocking players in a bus and going the wrong way down the track, then by all means go ahead. But there isn't a lot of skill involved there, and, well, anyone can do it. So we're going to stick to three different things, which I will go into in their own parts. Keeping up with players, defending players, and killing players. Now, in order to defend a player, we need to be able to stay in front of them. And if we can't keep up with the player in front, we're never going to crash them out. So, let's start with keeping pace. Uh, a quick aside, this is not going to make you the fastest player in the game, that's not what this series or even part of this video is about, uh, but it will give you the information that you need to keep up with almost every player in the game. We're going to start with tuning. You want to have your suspension as stiff as you feel comfortable using. Uh, typically 3 to 5 is a good bet for all tracks. I tend to use 4 on pretty much every track across the classes as well. Gearing should be set to where you top out fastest place in the game. Uh, this is the straight on boulder bank short. For C class it's around 5.7 to 6.0. Differentials should always be set to 4 or 5. 5 will be more predictable but harder to stop oversteering while 4 will be the opposite. Brakes should be always rear biased generally. Uh, either 2 or 3 is a good setting. I find 1 loses you a lot of braking distance although it is very smooth to use. For difficulty, you want to have ABS on half, traction control off, and stability control on half or full. Full will generally be slower, but a lot easier to be uh, controlled. Next we're going to focus on flow, not line choice. So what, what actually is flow? Well, it's actually a mountain biking term, which I've forced into the context of Wreckfest. And to explain it, we're going to go into a race. But uh, probably not this one, because it's already ended. Two and a half seconds ahead of me, the player Lucas is currently demonstrating how flow doesn't work. He's very active on the controls you can see, which is a relatively good thing, but he isn't using all of the track room that he has, and he's mismanaging his braking quite badly by essentially approaching the corner on the wrong side of the track, handbrake turning 90 degrees into the corner and just hoping he had the power to get through the corner. Well, this might work okay in A class at the speed he was going, but not in C or B class. It's not especially fast in any car or in any class, so it's just not a good idea. Notice how I close in on it. I'm braking quite a lot earlier, and I'm using my handbrake to get the correct angle that I want for the turn, before applying power and actually letting the car rotate itself, more or less, through the turn, making occasional corrections, uh, either turning in or out, to make sure that the car doesn't uh, straighten up or oversteer too much, uh, and end me up on the middle of the track when I leave the corner. This is, in essence, flow. But how can you flow a track that you don't know? In order to pull off that kind of driving, to flow a track, surely you need to know what track you're driving on, what corners are coming up. Well, yes, that helps a lot. Track knowledge is essentially paramount to any very fast lap time. But any player can get to within three seconds of the fastest car in the lobby with no more than 10 laps of practice. I wouldn't practice every track 10 laps, but that is going to be very boring. Just do the career mode, earn a bit of money, unlock some stuff while you learn the tracks a bit better. You'll also be able to get some more cars and you'll find out what cars you prefer and such, what style of cars. So what can we do in the meantime? Well, I'm going to set my gears to manual rather than clutch manual. Uh, it's well worth learning to use manual gears or clutch manual. According to my timing, clutch manual can cut up to a tenth of a second per gear change, which will obviously make seconds of a difference per lap, given that you can learn it. And we're going to chase down some players in, why not, the rocket. Okay, so all we're going to do is copy Shinobi's lines here, um, and we'll copy the player in front as, as we pass them. And all we're going to do is, while we're copying their lines, is go slightly tighter on the track when I have room available and I'm just going to take uh, wider lines and use more of the track when they don't. Uh, I am recording this in real time so I may have to spend some time paying attention. 
So as we see, uh, Shinobi went tight there. I'm going to go wide mainly to avoid that um, road slayer, but uh, we got past Shinobi anyway, so we'll go after this um, cardinal instead. And as you see, we're going to go slightly wider into the turn than him, and then we'll actually turn a bit more in the mid turn here, but we use more of the track overall and we don't come off and that allowed us to close down nearly half a second on him and again we see here we're coming in with a slightly smoother line and we're using more of the track we're staying further inside of the corner there and now within half a second we might even be able to catch him on this next turn here if he takes it wrong uh, just like that funnily enough and hopefully yeah there we go so next up we'll chase down this dude and as well, we're going to do the same thing as we did last time, where we'll go wide, the apex of the corner is here, we know that because we've done laps already, and it gives us a good time to close down on him. And we'll go left of this car. Generally when a car is spinning in an arc like that, unless they jam on the brakes, you can tend to go behind them, uh, more likely to avoid them that way. Well, he got crashed out, but that gives me a pretty easy win. Uh, and it, it's kind of as simple as that when it comes to copying a player's line. Breaking maybe a hundredth, two hundredth of a second later than them is basically all you need to do. And then, of course, we're just down to my own line choice, which, well, chances are is going to be faster. Um, but we aren't looking to go fast, we're looking to keep up and maintain pace. Alright, so what else can we do to help us keep pace with other players? Well, if you notice how I input on my controller, outside of cornering, it's very often, for lack of a better term, a flicking motion. Not a, a long hold, as you'll typically see. Uh, my controls are already set up to be quite a lot twitchier than average, but this still applies. And aside from that, the only other thing I can suggest is don't play other racing games for a while. Wreckfest handles like no other racing game. It's not realistic, but it's not as arcadey as something like GTA V, say. So just keep playing. Uh, another thing you could do is race against AI, set to the hardest difficulty. Uh, I like to race against A-class AI in a C-class car, um, but going C-class against a B-class uh, AI is probably a lot easier for, for newer players. And just do the exact same thing I described. Break later than them, and corner harder than them. And you will find a lot of the time actually you can cut inside of AI. Um, on something like Motor City, they do quite well, but you should be able to keep up no problem. It's, it's worth noting that this video, in fact this series of videos, will not make you good at the game. So get out there and start racing. Aside from that, you could try to learn one track. I'd recommend something with lots of turns in it, something like Savalax, uh, in a C-Class car. Aim for something like a 1 minute and 9. That's a very competitive time for keeping pace with most players in the game. Certainly in dirty lobbies, a 1 minute and 9 is going to be rare to see, at least in C-Class, and even B-Class. Aside from that, there's not really much more to it. Tune in next week for the second part of this series, Defending Players. Uh, thank you for watching.